On the fourth day of October, Halloween gave to me four drunken uncles, three werewolf colonies, two spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween here on Legion Podcast. I'm very excited to be continuing this series. I, as I've said in previous installments, I love Halloween and I love horror movies. And when you combine the two, it is two great tastes that taste great together. And we have been doing a little bit of a, a run of werewolf movies. Uh, we've got one more to go. But we are pausing at uh, number three in our, our list of werewolf films for a personal favorite of mine. Is it the best of werewolf movies? Eh, probably not. Is it a movie that I love dearly? Uh, yeah, it really is. And of course, I'm talking about Silver Bullet from 1985, a, a movie that is damn near 40 years old at this point. And I would argue the last great Gary Busey performance, perhaps. Like He's always kind of fun and, and unhinged. But this is a real performance. This is a real character. Uh, it, it's a fantastic role for him. It suits him so well. Uh, and outside of his uh, turn as Buddy Holly, I would probably argue it's it's my favorite performance of his. Let's get into it. What is Silver Bullet? Silver Bullet was, of course, based on the novella uh, Cycle of the Werewolf written by Stephen King and illustrated by Bernie Wrightson. It was a, a terrific little book. And this was turned into a screenplay by Stephen King himself, which I think is apparent in the dialogue in the film. A lot of people being called boogers and, <laughs> and that sort of thing. Um, but it has a, a very Stephen King feel, much more than uh, just a, an adaptation of a Stephen King novel would. Um, and it stars uh, Corey Feldman, a young Corey Feldman. And uh, he is terrific. He, he plays Marty. Marty Coslow. And he is a kid who is uh, paralyzed. And uh, his Uncle Red has clearly uh, helped him uh, devise a, a contraption that is uh, sort of a motorized wheelchair that he kind of runs around town, a little town called Tarker's Mills. And he has a sister named Janie that is older than Marty, a little bit uh, at each other's throats from time to time, as siblings tend to be. Um, the mother is a little overprotective of Marty to the, to the point that Janie sort of resents her brother somewhat. And then, uh, if you've never seen it, the, the, the movie happens where uh, a werewolf comes to town and starts killing some of the citizens, uh, beginning uh, with a, a a man out working the rails, singing about Rheingold beer, uh, and he gets killed by the werewolf, but because he's the town drunk uh, and is killed by the rails, they think it's an accident. And then the real horror begins when a woman who we know uh, from uh, a scene that Janie sees unfold um, is pregnant, and her boyfriend doesn't want anything to do uh, with this baby, so this woman is going to take her own life, but before she can do that, a werewolf comes to get her. And as uh, the the film goes on, Marty's best friend is killed by this werewolf, and they have to cancel the 4th of July, uh, and uh, one thing leads to another, and Marty discovers that the werewolf is in fact his uh, local reverend, who he has shot in the eye with a rocket on the 4th of July. Um, this reverend is played by Everett McGill. And Everett McGill is best known to me outside of Silver Bullet uh, as the guy uh, who plays Ed in Twin Peaks. But you might also remember him uh, from The People Under the Stairs as well. And he's a terrific actor. I uh, was also in an Under Siege, Under Siege 2, one of those. One of them Under Siege movies where he played a, a, a villain. Um, and he's a great villain. Uh, he 
also got into the werewolf suit for this. He is credited separately as the werewolf uh, in the closing credits of the movie. And uh, he's fantastic. Um, So a a little bit more about the cast. Uh, Corey Feldman is kind of at that age in this movie where most kid actors are kind of terrible and he wasn't. And it's a shame that he went on to have uh, substance abu- abuse problems and so forth. But I don't know that. I don't know. I mean, being a kid in Hollywood, I, I don't know that you can escape that. I or you can, but I think that's the rarity in some cases. Like Drew Barrymore famously had alcohol problems, was drunk on the set of Firestarter when she was just a child. Uh, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman both went on to have, um, you know, a, a little bit of loopiness follow them. Uh, I don't know that uh, Corey... I'm sorry, this is Corey Haim. I don't know that Corey Feldman uh, had ab- substance abuse problems. Maybe he did. I, I, I'm not all up on my Corey's lore, but I think that's right. But anyway, so Corey Haim is the Corey in this one. Apologies for getting his name wrong. And Corey Haim is is kind of great in this he's he's a great combination of innocent and curious and strong when he needs to be and and kind of funny uh he's just great he's a terrific kid actor it's a really good character for him and i really like his relationship with gary Busey, who plays his uncle red uncle red is a a bit of a drunkard uh as well is uh at odds with his sister Nan there's a great line where he tells uh, Janie and Marty you know the bitch of it is is me and your mom used to be just like you when we were kids and the bitch of it is we still are Uh, and like I said Gary Busey is so good in this his character is so much fun he loves his his nephew and his niece so much He, he does everything for them that he can up to and including building this super gassed up uh, wheelchair that gets named the silver bullet in, uh, in about the middle of the film uh, that he presents to Marty on the 4th of July and you know he, he's he's the right combination of being sort of a shithead but also clearly in love with his family and wanting to do the right thing, sometimes erring uh, on the side of, of, of perhaps being a little too uh, coddling. Um, but he's just a, a, a terrific character. And so when it turns out that there is a werewolf in town, Marty and Janie turn to Uncle Red uh, to help him out. And, and like I said, Gary Busey is he, he presents as, as not believing them, but also because he trusts that they're not totally insane, uh, kind of goes along with it to a certain degree until, you know, of course they prove to him that this is in fact the case, but that's truly at the end of the film. But he, he goes above and beyond. Like he goes and talks to the local uh, law enforcement to have the Reverend checked out when Marty tells him that, the Reverend tried to run him off the road and, and was going to kill him on this bridge. Um, and it's an eminently quotable character, uh, more so than the movie, but the, the character of Uncle Red is a very quotable character from him saying, holy jumped up Jesus Palomino uh, a couple of times in the film. And, uh, you know, when they tell uh, Uncle Red that they have been sending letters to the Reverend telling him to kill himself because uh, they know who he is and what he is, the letters say. Uh, he says, I'm a little too old to be playing the Hardy Boys meet Reverend Werewolf. You know, and there's a lot of stuff like that. And it's, he's so much fun in this movie and so charismatic and he's kind of chubby and he looks and sounds like the kind of guy who drinks too much and smokes too much. And I think that's just kind of who Gary Busey was. But also this kind of Stephen King... Uh, somewhat colloquial dialogue that he has. It just fits so well in his mouth and he's so good at delivering it. There's another great line uh, at the end of the movie when he's starting to doubt whether or not they should 
there's a real werewolf out there in the in the woods. Uh, he says, you know, I'm beginning to have a familiar sensation come over me. I'm starting to feel like a horse's ass. And it's that kind of stuff that just makes you love this character so much and, and love his relationship with Marty and Janie. Um, the werewolf itself, not terribly scary. The effects aren't great. There's some good stuff, particularly on the back end. Uh, some of the transformation stuff is not very good at all. Some of it is uh, pretty good. They started the movie without having completed the werewolf effect, so that goes some of the way to explaining why maybe it's not the best. Uh, but I really, really love it. I just think that Silver Bullet is uh, kind of a comfort food movie for me because I saw it so much when I was a kid. And like I said, I was in love with Gary Busey in the movie and his relationship with Marty. And I was kind of jealous of that. Like, I wished I'd had an Uncle Red in my life. Like, that that guy that was just unerringly going to be on your side. And no matter what crazy shit you threw at him, uh, he, w- he was going to go along with it to at least some degree. And it's sort of my aspiration. Like, I've got a nephew of my own now. And without all the, you know, drinking wild turkey straight from the bottle, I do try to be that uncle for my nephew who's a little too young to um you know get into uh too much shenanigans but that's what i think about when i think about uh my relationship with xander i think about uncle red and being that guy that this kid can call any time and because i'm broken as a person most things when it comes to relationships and emotions and stuff i i refer to a movie that is the thing that I wish was reality. And so that's how I look at my relationship with my own nephew is I want to be the uncle red to his Marty. And this movie means a lot to me for that reason as well. You know, I've sort of made that swap. I've crossed that meridian from feeling like I was the Marty wishing I I had an uncle red to being the uncle red, happy to have a Marty in my life. Uh, without, like I said, all the drinking and smoking. But, um, you know, as as a horror film, I would argue it's only so successful. It's not the scariest movie on this list, to be sure. But it is really comfortable, you know? It is the the old pair of slippers and and the tattered uh, robe of a horror movie where... I, you know, I've seen this a million times. We did it on Pick 6 Movies. Uh, I was happy to talk about it there. I'm happy to talk about it now. It's a movie that I can have a conversation with just about any time. I, I, like I said, I just love all these characters. I, I, and, and I like a lot of the weirdo dialogue. It's very Stephen King. Um, and there there's great side characters in it. Like, there's a shitty father that watches wrestling and complains about how cripples on welfare or bankrupting the country and that kind of thing you know he's just a terrible person and when he gets it it's just not violent enough even though it's maybe the most violent death uh speaking of the deaths maybe the only werewolf movie in which not one but two people are killed by baseball bats so i don't know i guess that's something um but yeah i i love silver bullet i love uh the characters in it I like the the feel of it, the small town kind of vibe to it. And there's another moment that sticks with me when I think about this film. And it's when, uh, after Marty's friend has been killed and it's the 4th of July and the fireworks have been called off. And as Gary Busey is leaving their 4th of July dinner with the family, he brings uh, Marty with him to the car and he hands him a sack of fireworks. And he says, uh, this isn't just because they canceled, uh, they, they canceled the, the fireworks show. It's so that no crazy shithead can beat the good guys. If you can dig that. And it's a vibe that I really love. And, and it's something that Stephen King trades in, in, in both film and in his books, this idea that sometimes you, you make this foolish gesture 
uh, as a way to kind of scream against the chaos and the darkness that you assert yourself as one of the good guys and say, this is what I believe in. This is what I stand for. And even if the act itself is silly or, or ultimately meaningless from the outside within this world, what it means is that the good guys are always going to fight for the light. You know, there's something about uh, the stand uh, in some of this as well, although that's, you know, a grander scope of good versus evil. But even at this micro level in in Silver Bullet, there's a lot of Stephen King talking about, like, sometimes you do, you you make these acts, you you perform these acts of, of heroism, even though they don't seem all that heroic, but the very act of doing them is the heroism of, of going out onto the bridge and firing the fireworks. That is a thumb in the eye to evil. And that's something I, I really like. I, I respond to that quite a bit. And, and I believe in that, that you do the small, simple things uh, out of love, out of, out of a sense of uh, hope. And in doing those things, the the act, what might have been meaningless, becomes suddenly very meaningful. And it's uh, it's something that I try to impart to to those around me. And for those of you listening, if I can wax a little more uh, philosophical for just a moment, it, it is that, yes, uh, sometimes you might feel a bit of, of shame or embarrassment in doing something that you love uh, when other people maybe don't give a shit uh but i say screw them you do the thing that you love and you do the thing that is most kind and most heroic not because of the end result but because the act itself is uh, is a thumb in the eye against chaos and evil and we are surrounded by that we are surrounded by you know ignorance and anger and hatred and and even petty shit petty squabbles on the internet and all that kind of thing and and just doing the simple act of of kindness and good uh, uh, stands tall in a world like this. So so shines a good deed in a weary world. To uh, to paraphrase Willy Wonka. Um, and so in a lot of ways, that's what Silver Bullet is to me. It is not a perfect film by any stretch, but there is an underlying. Uh, optimism in that movie and there's an underlying familial love in this movie that uh, really speaks to me and and still does the even when, as I watch it there's it I don't even totally understand I'll, I'll end with this my, my little pet theory about the narration there's some voiceover narration that goes through the film and at the end the whole movie is sort of narrated by an adult Janie telling this story of, of Marty and the year that the werewolf came to Tarker's Mills. And at the end of the film, uh, after they've, you know, spoilers, they've killed the werewolf. And Marty looks at his sister and he says, I love you, Janie. And the voice over kicks in and uh, Janie as an adult says, there were times when I couldn't say that, but I can now. I love you, Marty. Good night. And it's the good night that's weird. You know, it's almost like we have seen this uh, play performed on stage and it's the actor saying good night. My pet theory about this is that this is a story told by Janie after the death of her brother. And it's her looking back and, and reminiscing fondly about this horrifying thing that happened to them but also was a moment where they stood together uh, against the dark. And, uh, and I really admire it. I really love it. Uh, and, and I think that silver bullet is an imperfect film, but it's also a terrific film more in its attitude and in its sensibility than in its execution. Also shout out to Terry O'Quinn, who plays the local, uh, sheriff, and uh, I think he's quite good in, in this movie as well. Uh, a lot of good, like, minor performances. And Lawrence Tierney is really fun. Uh, you know, because it's a Stephen King movie, somebody, uh, an old woman, <laughs> asks her husband if he's going to make lemonade in his pants. I mean, I don't know how you, you say no to a movie like this. So 
anyway, here we are, day four of the 31 days of Halloween, and it's just banger after banger. Uh, we've got one more werewolf movie left to go. Uh, we, of course, will not reveal what movies lie ahead because that's part of the fun, is every day there is a new horror movie to talk about here on Legion Podcast, uh, as well as some other fun stuff, uh, you know, popping off all the time. Not just in October, but let's face it, Halloween season is uh, is my favorite. It is uh, many of the hosts here. Uh, it's the favorite season of many of them. And so we're doing a lot of fun stuff. And uh, please jump by uh, legionpodcasts.com um, if, uh, if you haven't in a while or haven't ever. Uh, and be sure you're subscribing to Legion Podcasts for all of the shows that we do and little uh, special stuff like this. We have uh, not only uh, this uh, special series running through October, but the the Legion Podcast main feed is the only place you're going to find shows like What You Watching, which is me and Jamie Sammons, uh, and also The Heart of Horror, uh, which is a new show that is uh, kind of a, a sporadic show, but one that uh, I think is a, a tremendous amount of fun. So at any rate... All that said, uh, thanks for listening. Get ready for more wolfy action tomorrow. And uh, until then, stay spooky out there. And we will talk to you on day five of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Bye.